Hey guys, it's Mike here, and in this video, what I want to do is talk about another popular fight and another fight that was left up in contention in the Dragon Ball franchise, and that is going to be the battle between Gohan and Deborah, the main character of the story at that point in the tale, and the king of the demon realm who is under the power of Bobbity, the evil warlock. And who exactly out of these two fighters would have been able to come out victorious if the fight wasn't interrupted by the extenuating circumstance of Vegeta and him becoming Majin Vegeta. So what I'm going to do right now is get into the manga. We're going to break that down. I'll also talk about the anime a little bit and get into who exactly would be the logical winner between the two. Okay, so everything that occurred next is going to be the battle between Gohan and Deborah, and I'm going to be going in-depth into that fight. But unfortunately, it isn't quite a long fight, especially in the manga version, which I'll be talking about a little bit. But at this point, Goku had defeated Yakan on stage 2, the prior stage 1 was defeated, uh, Pui Pui was effortlessly destroyed by Vegeta and one of the best one-side beatdowns in the franchise, and this leads into the battle between the two of Gohan and Deborah. So, let's actually get into that. Uh, beforehand, we do have a little bit of of uh, backstory or a little bit of uh, buildup with regard to Gohan's power, and I'll talk a little bit more about Gohan's, uh, you know, Deborah's actually uh, momentarily. So first off, you know, we get to see Goku saying, "You're up next, Gohan. You've been training." Uh, and then Gohan's like, uh, and Vegeta corrects them. He took peace as an excuse to slack off. We're stronger than he is now. And then Gohan, you know, he's being bashful. He's not exactly uh, denying this. And then Vegeta says something really interesting that will come into factor when it comes to discussing who the winner could have actually been here, which is, of course, we never know what may happen when he gets mad. Referring to Gohan's uh, ability to get really pissed off and pull plot right out of his ass. So with that being said, you know, Supreme Kai's talk about, wow, no wonder they are so powerful and so uh, relaxed at the same time. And then, of course, Deborah shows up, the number two two behind Bobbity, uh, who looks way more like a number two than Deborah. And, you know, he actually at first wanted to fight all of them at the same time because he was so sure of his strength. Obviously, that wouldn't have gone too well for Deborah at that point. And uh, then this is when Gohan steps in. He says, it's my turn. And, uh, you know, the fight is about to begin. But and one of the things that has always bothered me about this arc, especially with regard to this fight, is that Toriyama doesn't really seem to care enough to actually show it. At this point in the story, Gohan is the main character who has replaced Goku, who you could see behind him because he's dead and he decided to leave forever until he just comes back in this arc. And, you know, the thing is that we're about to see the climactic first serious battle that we get with this main character of Gohan since the Cell games against a character who I'll get into soon was actually compared to Cell and could be argued to be kind of a stand-in for him relative to power scaling with Boo later on. But Toriyama just decides, I don't really care, and cuts away and just starts to go into this goofy tournament with Mr. Satan, Gotenks, Android 18, everything like that. And it really goes to show you just how little he seemed to care about his own main character at this point actually showing this battle taking place. It's not until after everything that occurs at this tournament with this battle royal that happens, uh, which is a lot more of a uh, one that's easy to follow than the Tournament of Power, for example. And uh, we finally get back to the fight that's already in progress. You know, Toriyama even recaps this a little bit. Even as Hercules celebrated his victory, Mr. Satan, Gohan and Deborah were locked in combat. And, you know, in the anime, we do see a lot more fleshed out here. This is one of the things that I think the anime did better than the manga, because the anime actually gave us, you know, and Gohan, I guess, the respect enough to show the buildup to the fight to where we see right now, where Gohan is transformed. I'll get into what that form is momentarily. And, you know, in the anime, we actually get to see him fight a little bit in base, we get to see him test out Deborah's power, and we get an explanation of where he actually goes, rather than them just kind of being here in this uh, realm that we never even get an explanation for in the manga. So, 
As we can see right here, the two of them are battling. Deboer is blocking some shots from Gohan, except for this big one where Gohan, I guess, kicks him out of the way, it looks like. You know, Deboer stops himself, and then he starts to use one of his demon techniques where he fires, well, I guess fire at Gohan, who jumps out of the way. Uh, Deborah proceeds to use an after image and then punches uh, Gohan punches him but Gohan is easily taken advantage of, I suppose, by the fact that he doesn't seem to notice that that's an after image. And then Deborah fires this really powerful blast right at Gohan, sending him into the water. And as I talked about in my previous fight analysis video, when someone is able to uh, deal damage enough to where uh, it damages the opponent's clothing, this means that their blast, their technique, whatever it was, actually was strong enough to go through their opponent's force field and their defenses. We could see Gohan has his aura up. He's definitely well shielded, but Deborah was still able to get right through that taking him off guard and, uh, as you can see, damaging his clothing and kind of giving us that uh, Gohan skin-tight suit that's uh, pretty iconic at this point. This entire outfit really is for Gohan. Might be my favorite outfit of his because it actually, you know, is his outfit versus later on where he just, you know, uh, either wears Goku's clothing or Piccolo's back and forth for pretty much every arc. And uh, right here, what we see is that Goku mentions, so he uses magic, huh? He's tougher than I thought. Depending upon the translation, this could mean that he's stronger than I thought. Now, what exactly uh, does that mean? Well, in terms of the relative power comparing these two characters, we do get estimates and we do get uh, information given to us. Vegeta here repeats something that he actually said earlier when Gohan became a Super Saiyan 2 at the tournament, where he said he still shouldn't be having this much trouble with him, pathetic. Gohan was stronger when he was a kid, and Goku does say he really has been slacking. At this point, you see Vegeta starts to lose patience, which which is kind of one of the uh, mitigating factors for this fight coming to an end when it does. Now, in terms of what Goku's saying here when he says that he's tougher than I thought, what does this exactly mean? Well, we have a perfect statement to explain, and that is right here earlier in the uh, story. When we get explanations given to us specifically uh, from Vegeta and Goku as to how powerful they believe Deborah is. So, uh, you know, Supreme Kai at this point saying we can't just destroy the floor and go down because they'll wake and boo and he'll be able to defeat all of them even if he's not yet at full power. And Vegeta just, you know, scoffs and he says, I bet this boo isn't much to speak of either, just like Debora uh, or Dabra in the manga, if you're wondering why I keep pronouncing it that way. What? Like Dabra? What do you mean? Supreme Kai says, and he's very surprised. I'm saying that Deborah's not as terrible as you think. We saw him outside and we could have easily handled him as long as we dodged his saliva. Kabito is just incompetent, that's all. Supreme Kai turns to Goku and he says, Goku, is this true? Yeah, responds Goku. At the level we are now, anyway, he would have been bad news before, though. There was a guy named Cell seven years ago. I guess they're about the same. So, so many times over the course of my uh, career I, on YouTube, I suppose I could say, and really my time in the Dragon Ball fandom ever since I was a kid, I've heard so much said about this particular line. There was a guy named Cell seven years ago, I guess they're about the same. Uh, and so many people say, well, which Cell? Clearly Goku's referring to perfect Cell, right? Which. Really, this is never said. It's only saying cell. You can make the exact same argument that he's saying perfect cell for imperfect cell or semi-perfect, but we all know that he's not talking about that because any of these characters would easily one-shot him in just their regular Super Saiyan, including Gohan. So the question always comes down to whether he means uh, perfect or super perfect. And I think it's pretty clear that he's actually referring to super perfect cell as opposed to perfect cell. And a lot of people would say, oh, that doesn't make any sense because Go Gohan was fighting against him equivalently. How could he possibly mean super perfect cell, especially considering the uh, ambiguity around what form Gohan was actually in during this fight, which I'll get into momentarily. But as we can see right here, there is a logical reason why Goku would be talking about Cell in this particular form we see here of Super Perfect. Because as we see later on, when Ch Cell is charging up his Kamehameha that he's going to blow away the entire solar system with, uh, Go uh, Gohan has completely given up all of his hope of winning. He's not even going to try until 
Goku intervenes and tells him that he needs to. He's explaining to him that we're still, you know, in our bodies in the other form. And what he says right here is, now, come on, fire off a Kamehameha just like Cell. You can win, I know it. So Goku's not only talking through Supreme, or King Kai rather, but at the same time, he's able to sense the battle that is occurring with the far more powerful version of Cell, super perfect Cell right here, and with Gohan. So Goku does know exactly how powerful Gohan is, as well as how powerful super perfect Cell is. So when he says that there was a guy named Cell seven years ago, I guess they're about the same, he's saying that Deborah is the same as this Cell. And it's just that over the course of the past seven years, Goku and Vegeta as Super Saiyan 2s are now far more powerful than Cell was, and thus as a result, that's why they're saying it's not that big of a deal, but it would have been bad news before. So again, when Goku right here says, so he uses magic, huh? He's tougher than I thought. What he's saying is that he's tougher than his previous initial estimate, which was this character, Super Perfect Cell, who could blow up entire solar systems, and Deborah, he's saying, is actually stronger. So that gives you indication right there through a combination of pure power and magic, Deborah is actually not only comparable to Super Perfect Cell, the most powerful version of the prior villain, but definitely uh, indicated here to be tougher than that. So that's an even bigger deal. With that being said, Vegeta still thinks that if Gohan had kept up his training, or at least maintained the same level of power from when he was a kid, he should have been able to win. So that's another question too. There's a lot of people over the years who have said this Cell is actually more powerful than Gohan as Super Saiyan 2 when he was a kid. And most of that comes down to a couple different scenes that set that up. And let me show you those right here. The first one is going to be when uh, Vegeta attacks Cell and, uh, you know, he's firing those blasts. This is right after what happened with, uh, you know, Trunks being killed. And then Vegeta gets a uh, bitch slapped all the way to the ground. And uh, what happens? Gohan flies in the way of this piercing attack from Cell that was meant to kill Vegeta. He takes a bunch of damage. It cripples his arm, which is, you know, a time echo, essentially, from what occurred with his uh, future self. And uh, what happens? He says... Cell's power increased more than I thought, Gohan says. And this is what leads to him having to use only one arm against Cell. So that is a big thing that many people say, well, you know, Cell was just trying to kill Vegeta, and he says enough fooling around, and then Gohan says Cell's powers increased more than I thought. But that doesn't really mean that Cell was more powerful than Gohan. To the contrary, look what happens when Cell first shows up as Super Perfect Cell. He shows how powerful he is, Gohan's standing right in front of him, and Gohan transforms into Super Saiyan 2 again, well, or at least he powers back up. And Cell is surprised when Gohan starts to laugh, and then he says, My dad died because I was arrogant. I'm glad I can avenge his death. I just wish I'd killed you before. So... Really, Gohan still believes, even though he's staying in front of Super Perfect Cell, that he's more powerful and can still beat him. So, what do we see later on? Well, Gohan actually does that when he vaporizes Cell by using the Kamehameha, the, you know, the father-son one that they like to call it. But, at this point, we also have another indication that many people have used to scale Gohan comparative to Cell, where he says, <clears throat> let's see, right here, he says... But what good would it do now? I can only use one arm. I've lost half of my chi, or ki in the Japanese. And then, uh, you know, Goku still says he could beat him. One last time, show me the power that we made together. And then he fires off this Kamehameha to match Super Perfect Cells, which he just said was capable of destroying an entire solar system. So... With regard to that, we do see Piccolo saying that Gohan can't win his chi is too weak, but as we do see later on, that isn't quite the case, as uh, in a very, very fast rush version comparative to the uh, anime, we do see that, you know, Gohan is able to overcome, uh, because, as Goku says right here, hang on, Gohan, hang on, you haven't used all your power yet again, he's able to sense every single thing that's occurring right here. Gohan says he's doing his best, but we know that isn't the case. Because the thing is that really when it comes down to how much power Gohan has, we see that he only truly unleashes all of it right here when Cell is distracted, and then he overpowers Cell's Kamehameha and vaporizes Cell. 
But was Gohan really only using half power? A lot of this seems to really be more about Gohan's mental state. He was down on himself, he believed that he was weaker because he had lost one of his arms essentially, but was he really only at half power? I find that hard to believe. I think it was more down to a mental block that he had, as opposed to it simply being that he vape, you know, he lost half of his chi just because he, you know, lost one of his arms. I don't really think that that's necessarily the case. I think that when Gohan was finally firm in his resolve, knew exactly what he was going to do, we see his power go up significantly to charge uh, up against Cell's Kamehameha, and then we see him overpower and defeat Cell. But even if for whatever reason you do want to say that Gohan was able to defeat Cell with half of his energy, that goes to show you that in either case, Gohan was very, very likely more powerful than Super Perfect Cell. So the fact that what we see here as to Gohan being able to fight against Deborah, who is more powerful than Super Perfect Cell, still lines up. After all, as I talked about in a video with MJ on my channel about how much power Gohan lost between the Boost or between the Cell Saga and the Boost Saga, it really wasn't anywhere near as much as a lot of people like to make it out to be. Maybe 20-25%, definitely not several times. His power definitely wasn't only a fraction of what it was as a kid. It's just that he didn't have the same rage in the same battle sense that he had prior, which is why he couldn't truly tap into that. And when Gohan becomes a Super Saiyan 2 uh, at the tournament, a lot of people do also try and say that the only reason that he did that there and not here, which I'll get into in a second, is because he was mad about Fidel. But as we saw during that point in the story, Videl was already healed and good to go, and Gohan was significantly more calmed down than he was before. So the idea that Gohan only tapped into Super Saiyan 2 here because he was raged out against Spopovich isn't really the case. Not to mention, Gohan was actually not just a Super Saiyan 2 here, but against Debora. Now, I know a lot of people over the years have tried to argue that he wasn't, but really look at Gohan's design. He has that one bang there. He has that one bang here. The only thing that Gohan is really missing in terms of being a Super Saiyan 2 is, well, the lightning. And so many times throughout this arc especially, there are characters that become Super Saiyan 2s without ever having the lightning around them. The lightning is usually more of a creative uh, suggestion by Toriyama to show just how powerful a character is, but you know, even Nappa had uh, lightning when he powered up back in the in the original arc. Does that mean, you know, in the Saiyan saga at least, does that mean that he for some reason is the Super Saiyan 2? No. And there's plenty of times where you know, characters are Super Saiyan 2 and they're not using the lightning. I think that comes down more to Toriyama and, you know, him not really knowing what Super Saiyan 2 was necessarily, still kind of coming up with that as he went along. Because, you know, we know it's a powered up version of Super Saiyan, but there's so much ambiguity about, you know, just how big of a difference there is in the manga itself between the two forms other than just like a power boost. And eventually Toriyama basically just abandons the form anyway with Super Saiyan 3 in this storyline uh, anyway. So I really think that it's more of a creative choice or maybe Toriyama just kind of forgot that Super Saiyan 2 is supposed to have lightning during this fight, uh, and that's more of the reason as to why that occurred, as opposed to, you know, Gohan just being a regular Super Saiyan against Debora, because obviously there's no way he would have been able to fight against somebody stronger than Super Perfect Cell in just his Super Saiyan form. So that kind of establishes just how powerful the two characters are. As the fight went along, we also began to see more of Deborah's techniques, especially his spit on display, which is definitely a big thing that would be able to help him during this fight. You know, he hits Gohan's glove because Gohan's once again caught off guard, and Gohan's flying in to fight this guy, but, you know, even though Deborah has to turn around to see him, he still catches Gohan off guard. So... At this point, though, you know, a lot of people would say, well, this means that Gohan's obviously way weaker than Deborah, right? But Deborah conjures a sword, cuts right at Gohan, and Gohan's still able to catch it and then snap it and stop it from being able to hurt him. Now, at this point, we see that both Gohan and Deborah are huffing and puffing here. This isn't something that would be occurring if Deborah was holding back gigantically because, you know, after all, when you get tired in Dragon Ball during a fight, that means you're putting out a lot of power to be able to do that because these guys are like the Energizer Bunny. If they're not trying, they could fight forever, basically. So 
At this point, you know, we see that this is where the fight comes to its conclusion. Vegeta starts to channel more and more of his rage so that Deborah and Bobby will take advantage of this and eventually turn him into Majin Vegeta so that he can get a power-up so that he's able to fight against Goku, which is something that he actually explains. And at this point, it stops. Go Gohan says, oh, are you running away? And Deborah just, you know, confidently says, I don't need to waste my time with you because we could just recruit somebody else to our side. Now, later on, there is another example of when the two were actually going to be able to fight, Gohan and Deborah, that ties more into this again. As we see, they're going to fight again uh, as Goku and Vegeta are fighting as Super Saiyan 2s, and we're going to see, you know, exactly who would be able to win here if they could stop them from unleashing Boo. Of course, it ends up being a little bit too late. So, again, we finally have our chance to see this fight play out, and uh, Bobby asks Dabora, just to make sure, Dabra, uh, you can defeat that Earthling, right? Deborah says, of course, I fought him earlier. It won't be hard to dispose of this little snot. And at this point, we do see that Gohan is, is remembering what Goku said to him right before he went off to fight Vegeta, which is, get angry, Gohan. Remember the time you fought Cell and bring out all the power you have. You can't lose to anyone that way. Anyone. So this is the point where Gohan starts to rev up. He says, I am angry, but I can't be the, be the way I was back then. You know, he, for whatever reason, can't channel that rage the same way he could when he was a kid. I guess he doesn't have a, a you know, a cybernetic organism's head to get stomped on that looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> so with that being said, you know, we do see that... Um, Deborah still seems to be confident that he could beat Gohan, but as we do see earlier in the story, you know, Vegeta calls some of this into question in terms of whether he could beat anyone because the fact that, what do we see? Vegeta echoes, let me skip forward a lot so I can get to the point where I'm talking about, uh, and he says, of course, we may never know what will happen when he gets mad. So the narrative from multiple characters is telling us that Gohan would be able to beat anyone Assuming that he just brings out his true hidden potential, his energy, and later on in the story, what do we see? When Gohan gets his energy unlocked, his full potential, he becomes more powerful than Super Boo when just Fat Boo was able to easily stomp Deborah. Uh, so I do think that that means that Gohan definitely could surpass the power of Deborah if during the course of their fight he were to tap into his rage. But again, we never see this fight come to its conclusion because of the fact that just during this, right before they even get a chance to do anything, it's time for Boo to awaken. Now, of course, in the anime version, when Boo does wake up, we see an extended fight in which Deborah attacks him, not only just by throwing the spear through him, but also, when he blasts him like crazy, of course, none of it does anything. But he still does do better comparative to Gohan and Supreme Kai against this being. In the anime, he's just really easily beaten, like immediately before he can even throw a punch, and then eaten uh, right away. So that basically is what happens to him. So Boo fodderizes everyone in that case. There isn't really any chance for Gohan or Supreme Kai or Deborah to really show the difference in their powers relative to him because they all just get effortlessly stomped. So with it coming down to that then, who exactly would be able to win in a fight between Gohan and Deborah? Who would be more powerful? Who would have the better techniques? And in turn, uh, who would come out victorious. Well, as it was in terms of overall techniques, it does seem like Deborah did have the edge there. He also had more of his fighting sense, whereas Gohan definitely didn't. But with that being said, we do know that Gohan is the king of ass pulls in this franchise, the guy who gets really angry. It becomes significantly more powerful than he ever was before. You know, especially in Dragon Ball Super, you can get mad one time and surpass the most powerful forms in the franchise, regardless of what type of training they have. Uh, in Dragon Ball Z, it wasn't quite that ridiculous in the Dragon Ball manga that Toriyama wrote. But nonetheless, I think it really comes down to that factor. Does Gohan get angry enough when he's pushed to his breaking point, to his limits, and he's right about to be defeated by Deborah to rage out and take out the King of Demons and defeat him then and there? Uh, or does uh, Deborah either defeat him before that with a combination of techniques or just land spit on Gohan? Because that's the thing. He landed spit on one of Gohan's gloves earlier, but if he were to land on Gohan's face, on an actual part of his body, unless Gohan chopped that part of his body off, you know, like a piccolo maneuver, basically, then he's basically shit out of luck. He's done. He's defeated. It's over for him. So, 
This really is a difficult fight to truly say. I think within the course of the story, Gohan was the main character. He has some of the best plot armor in the story. I think he probably would have come out victorious because he probably would have raged out, overcome Deborah, vaporized him with a Kamehameha or Masenko or something like that. And uh, that's probably how it would have gone in terms of Toriyama was writing the story. Uh, in terms of in-universe, if Gohan doesn't get that rage boost and he doesn't get, uh, you know... He can't avoid that spit hitting him in a place that actually will immediately take him out, then he's done for. Not to mention, we didn't see every single thing that Deborah has, I'm sure. Maybe he has even other techniques. He does seem to have some degree of regeneration because his eyes get gouged out and he grows them back, so that could definitely be in his favor too. But it really comes down to rage boost versus spit which activates first, which hits the opponent first in a vital point, and uh, then the victor goes to spoils in that case. So, everyone, let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments. Who do you think would have won if this fight wasn't interrupted? Also, I do have a poll over on my channel, which I'll show you right now, where I asked everyone this question. Currently, right now, it would appear that most people believe that it was actually going to be Gohan who would overwhelmingly win. So I'm interested to hear if everyone believes that as well down below in the comments. But thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and stick around because there's a lot more to come in the future. See you later, guys. Yeah, and you better subscribe.